Do you want to be the very best, like no one ever was? Well, that's what this build is all about. Pokemon is the highest selling franchise of all time. And we're not just talking video games, but franchises in general. And with over $110 billion pocketed, everyone remembers their favorite starting Pokemon. Going back to the old school days, I know my favorite was Squirtle. Because why wouldn't you want a giant turtle with cannons sticking out of their back once it evolves? The usual fan favorite was Charmander, just so you could wind up having your own pet dragon. And then there's a select few that went with Bulbasaur. Not to mention one of the most famous mascots from the game that wound up being a very popular starter after Pokemon Yellow came out. The one, the only, Pikachu. So, how would you play them in D&D? Let's figure out how to play all these starting Pokemon as well as the Pokemon trainer themselves in today's D&D Build. Welcome to D&D Builds where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous builds and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And especially comment if there's something that you would do different. That way maybe you teach me and I'll teach you in this Pokemon Build. If you want to help me make content like this even more, feel free to check out the link in my description down below where you can join my Patreon and even get the chance to play D&D DM'd by myself. Today we're going to be building a whole bunch of Pokemon. But let's start off with the trainer first, because maybe you want to do a little more than just say your own name constantly. Squirtle Squirtle. There's the easy route where you can just grab a human, grab the Far Traveler background as you make quite the journey to the Pokemon League, and then you can just grab the class Shepherd Druid. They are known to be one of the best summoners in the game, and that's pretty much what they're made for. But that's a little too simple, and that's just not our style. While you could summon all sorts of creatures doing the Shepherd Druid stuff, there's something a bit more akin to summoning your starting Pokemon. And if we take a close look at those Pokemon, when you first get them, Charmander is definitely a bit of a lizard, Squirtle is a turtle for the most part, Bulbasaur is kind of a frog or a toad, which was a bit of a controversy once they saw a depiction of how a Bulbasaur actually kind of hops around. And then, of course, Pikachu is pretty close to a mouse or a rat. And if you get a little creative with the whole turtle thing, maybe leaning into a very weirdly shaped crab or fish or quipper, then Find Familiar covers all of these bases. And a Pokemon trainer really emphasizes that connection with their Pokemon. So the one class that really emphasizes Find Familiar more than any other is a Warlock with Pact of the Chain. Warlocks get plenty of spell casting, and with Find Familiar, you can cast touch spells through your familiar, essentially commanding them to do particular moves, just like you would in Pokemon. And there's an Eldritch Invocation called Investment of the Chain Master. This allows you to grant flying speed or a swimming speed to your familiar, which is great for when you pick up those HM abilities, granting Surf or Fly. And this invocation also allows you to order them to attack as a bonus action. There's additional invocations where you can communicate better with your Pokemon. And in general, I kind of like this overall build. And if you really want to go a step further and pick a patron, I would get a little weird with it and go with the Undying patron. Since if you're going based off of the show, it really seems like the main characters never really grow up or get old, which is a little weird and a little creepy. Although you could take an alternative route and grab the patron of a Celestial, because throughout the lore of Pokemon, you will be interacting with what are essentially gods in Pokemon. With the trainer taken care of, let's jump into some of the Pokemon themselves. Starting with one of the least popular, although I do know a fair amount of people that this was their favorite. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! It's Bulbasaur! Bulbasaur! Fuck! Bulbasaur, who of course upgrades to Ivysaur and Venusaur. As we briefly mentioned, there are some depictions of Venusaur kind of doing a bit of a hop, showing that there's a chance that this creature can be a bit more toad-like. And there's a race in D&D called Grung. From the source book One Grung Above, this is a frog-like humanoid that's usually found in rainforests, 
and tropical jungles. They have poison immunity and poisonous skin, which is very fitting considering all of the poison-like attacks that Venusaur tends to use. Additionally, they're granted the ability Amphibious, so they can breathe air and water, which can be very useful since most plant-type Pokémon have a bit of resistance to water-type damage. And since most Pokémon are fighters to an extent, you can either take the Gladiator background or Athlete, since it is kind of a sport. And then for a class, we're gonna grab Druid. There's a Druid subclass called Circle of Spores. This really leans into poisonous spores and you get additional abilities like Symbiotic Entity, Fungal Infestation, Spreading Spores, and Fungal Body. Really allowing you to shake your flower on your back and unleash tons of poison clouds. Casting spells like Cloud Kill. You can grab the Cantrip Thorn Whip so you can slash your vines around. And then at a higher level to reenact whipping your razor leaves at enemies, you can pick up the spell Whirlwind. Granted, it does bludgeoning damage, but the only other way we can really pull this off is if you were to multi-class and pick up something like Cloud of Daggers. But a multi-class doesn't really feel quite right, so I kind of like to just stick with Druid here. Now let's go on to the next Pokemon. This is my favorite starter. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! It's Squirtle! Squirtle, Squirtle. Fuck! Squirtle. The race is going to be super easy to pick here, as there's a turtle race, which is essentially just a turtle. I was tempted to go Druid again and just grab Circle of the Land with an emphasis on the land of the coast, so that way you can really focus on some water-based spells. But eventually Squirtle evolves and becomes Blastoise. And with that in mind, there's one class that is definitely more of a blaster than anyone else. And that's the Evocation Wizard. Wizards get access to some of the most spells out of any class in the game. And Evocation Wizards specifically are all about blasting and doing tons and tons of damage. So pick up every ice and water spell you can find, whether it's Cone of Cold, Water Breathing, or Wall of Water. And then just make sure to pick up some little things like Ice Knife and Ray of Frost for those lower level spells and cantrips. An alternative here would be going a bit more heavy on the underwater idea. And you could grab one of the newer Warlock subclasses, the Fathomless. Although much of this subclass really depends heavily on tentacles. And I don't know if you really want to go that whole hentai route even if we are touching a bit more on anime, that might be going a little far. So now let's jump into the next Pokemon. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! It's Charmander! Fuck! That's right, this is gonna be one of the favorite starters for most of the OG crowd, Charmander, who eventually evolves into Charizard. So there's two main options for a race here. There's the obvious Dragonborn, but the sad thing is that they don't get wings unless you pick up one of the variant Dragonborns, but then you have to give up their fire breath. And that's kind of what Charizard and Charmander are all about. You could go a little different and grab Tiefling. Tieflings tend to have horns and so does every evolution of Charmander. And there's a variant Tiefling that can have wings, but it's really just hard to give up on that fire breath. So I'm gonna stick with Dragonborn for now and we'll make sure to get those wings later on. Frankly, there's a very obvious class and subclass to choose with Sorcerer Draconic Bloodline. The only real issue here is that sorcerers depend very heavily on charisma, and usually Charizard is depicted as kind of the cranky one, and most Pokemon only say their own names, which doesn't really lend itself to charisma. But if you can get past that and find Charmander to be a bit more lovable, then I think Sorcerer Draconic Bloodline is going to be the way to go. And you want to go full-blown Pokemon Fire Red by taking the Red Dragon Ancestor. Going with a Draconic Bloodline and choosing this Red Dragon Ancestor means that you can add your Charisma modifier to any fire damage that you deal. Additionally, this adds to your more dragon-like appearance with Draconic Resilience. And then, almost like you're evolving from Charmander, to Charmeleon, to Charizard, at level 14 you get your Dragon Wings, giving you plenty of flight speed. Then lastly, you can let out a massive roar, 
embracing your draconic presence. This channels dread into your enemies and inflicting fear. Then we're gonna grab pretty much every fire related spell in the game. So grab Firebolt, grab Create Bonfire, grab Control Flames, all from your cantrips. Grab Burning Hands to really spew out the fire. And of course, don't forget about your trusty Fireball. And lastly, the Dragonborn race doesn't really get to use their Dragon Breath ability as much as they would like. So grab Dragon Breath the spell while you're at it. There's of course plenty of others like Wall of Fire and Flaming Sphere, but if I just started listing every fire spell, we'd be here a while. So let's jump into our last Pokemon we're gonna cover in this video. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! It's Pikachu! That's right, it's one of the most popular Pokemon and a long-running mascot. Not to mention the privilege of being voiced by Ryan Reynolds in the Detective Pikachu movie. We're gonna make Pikachu. And I was tempted to lean into a slightly similar path to what I brought up in my How to Build a Gretzko video by relying on the idea that there's kind of cute depictions of almost any race in D&D if you look hard enough. And I wanted to grab one of the smaller races and maybe grab Cobalt. But the fact that Cobalt have sunlight sensitivity makes that really hard to sell because Pikachu lets out tons of blinding lightning on a regular basis. And we can't just give him those cool Squirtle shades because that would be kind of game breaking if those existed in D&D. Otherwise you could just give pretty much anybody with sunlight sensitivity sunglasses and it wouldn't be an issue anymore. So instead, I'm gonna go with the more fuzzy, cute version and not go with something that's required to be small, but you actually have the option to make this race small if you'd like. And I'm gonna go with Herengon. These are essentially rabbit folk, and that's the closest we're gonna get as far as a race to something that's kind of mouse-like and I'd say Pikachu is a little closer to a chinchilla, so I think a rabbit-type creature does really make sense. The Herringon race is from the source book The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and they get lucky footwork, which allows them to easily dodge things a bit more, which makes sense considering Pikachu has some pretty high agility. So I was very torn at what class to pick because obviously we need to lean into the lightning abilities, and there's a few choices with that. There's a storm sorcerer or a cleric tempest domain unfortunately there's spells from druid that we really want which is just call lightning although you can get that from the cleric of the tempest domain but considering that ryan reynolds voiced pikachu and pikachu has long been a mascot of pokemon let's lean into the charisma to start and go with a storm sorcerer storm sorcerer will give you all of the access to the sorcery spells that we want like Lightning Lure, Shocking Grasp, and of course, the one that we want the most, Lightning Bolt. You can also grab some other spells like Thunder Wave. Even though it's more of a sound-based spell, it kind of leans into the whole Thunder Shock mentality. And you can grab Haste to really boost your quickness. You get the ability Heart of the Storm, granting you resistance to lightning and thunder damage. You also get Storm Guide, allowing you to subtly control weather around you, so you can usher in a storm a little better. And you get Storm's Fury, allowing you to deal lightning damage to anybody that attacks you. You could also get Wind Soul, but this does focus on the wind name. It does give you immunity to lightning and thunder damage, but it's really hard to avoid getting call lightning. So if you wanted to take this all the way through, you could go ahead and go for it. Grab wind soul and max out your Pikachu all the way to 20 levels of sorcerer. But I would just take 14 levels in sorcerer, and then you can take six levels in Tempest Cleric. This allows you to get plenty of benefits from your Storm Sorcery, and then from your Tempest Cleric, you get Call Lightning, which is what we really wanted, 
and you get Wrath of the Storm, allowing you another way to deal lightning damage to attackers. You get Channel Divinity, Destructive Wrath, because there are definite points in the show and a handful of other references where Pikachu just kind of unleashes its wrath. This Channel Divinity allows you to maximize the damage that you deal with lightning or thunder damage. And then for your last level in this build, you can get Thunderous Strike. When you deal lightning damage to a large or smaller creature, you can also just push it 10 feet away. It seems like kind of a soft way to hit level 20, but it's the best way we can really get everything we want from both classes. So this will allow you to make a full five person party in D&D 5th edition. So now with this build, you can be the very best like no one ever was. Granted, it might get slightly annoying with four out of the five party members just saying their own name repeatedly, but if you want to play Pokemon in D&D, you can do it. That's going to be it for today. This has been D&D Builds. If you like this kind of content, drop us a like mint. That's a subscribe, a like, and a comment. Make sure to comment, especially if there's something you would do different. That way, maybe you teach me and I'll teach you when it comes to this Pokemon build. If you want to help me make content like this even more, feel free to check out the link in my description down below where you can join my Patreon and even get the chance to play D&D DM'd by myself. Until next time, here's hoping you catch them all and get at least three nat 20s on your next D&D session.